When we embrace change on the spiritual journey, we allow ourselves to always change. We allow ourselves to always grow, to always expand, to always know that we can be comfortable wherever we're at and whoever we're with or whatever we're doing and wherever we plant ourselves. Because what we really need to know is that when we're having change, we need to ground ourselves. We need to keep ourselves strict. We have to keep ourselves aligned and we have to really enforce boundaries when we're having a change. And that means enforcing boundaries between people, between places, between energies, and all of that good stuff. So welcome to the Oracle of Love, Light, and Wisdom. This is White Wolf. And I wanted to make a video today because I wanted to make more videos for YouTube. I see that four people have subscribed. So thank you guys so much. Feel free to donate. Also, running a special one hour, 60 minutes for psychic readings for $60, an hour and 20 minutes for $120, an hour and 40 minutes for $140. So, um, but trusting your talents in changing times, trusting your talents as they come to you, as inspiration, intuition comes to you, trusting yourself, having faith in yourself, empowering yourself, knowing that nothing can hurt you, knowing that nothing can change who you are, not a person, not energy, not what your job says about you, not about what your bank account says about you, but what you say about you is what matters at the end of the day. You have to keep speaking victory even when you don't see victory. You have to believe in what you're doing even when you don't see a sign that anything is really happening in your life. So the one thing that I know, but this video isn't really just about change. But it's about migration. It's about transversing energy. It's about transversing the timelines, transversing the metaphysical nature of reality, the non-physical nature of reality, and how we're balancing that with the physical and also with the non-dual awareness that we're accumulating upon this time. So everybody has an independent nature of their own reality, but everybody is independent energy. They are kinetic, psychic, atomic energy, autonomous energy. So knowing that we are that, knowing that we are creation, knowing that we are the creation that we set forth and that the perception matters when what we want to see. We have to see through the eyes of God. So trusting your talents in changing times, meaning that maybe you're going through a rough patch in your spiritual journey. Maybe you don't know where to go from here. Maybe you don't know where you're gonna be in a week. Maybe you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe you're going through a move. Maybe you're going through a job change. Maybe you're making so many spontaneous automatic choices that you don't even realize what is going on in your life. And then you have to practice the pause. So this video is really just about practicing the pause and knowing that there is going to be pauses in your journey. And we may not like it. We may not understand it. We may not always feel great during it. And usually this is the beginning of the spiritual journey, but sometimes this happens in between the spiritual journey. Like maybe you're three or five years down the road and you're still, you know, going through things, and it's not really having a dark night of the soul. A lot of us are, but a lot of us who are advanced, a lot of us who have grown a lot, sometimes we have days of integration. Sometimes we have days of healing, days of trying to get back to ourselves because our God self and our human self is trying to get back to ourself. That's called integration. So when we realize that this is integration, that manifestation is happening, but the manifestation has to integrate itself because we're the manifestation of life. When we call ourselves energy, we're calling ourselves manifestations. They're not just manifestations like, oh, I got a lot of money uh, the other day and I just manifested a bunch of money. I won the lottery or whatever. That's not just what I'm talking about. But what I'm really talking about is that the way that we view life, the way that we can change with life, the way that we can change our perspective on life, that life is not out to get us, but life is here to show us stuff. And life is here to make us learn. And we may not like it. We may not love it. But we end up really loving it and loving the excitement of it. Loving the amazement of the spiritual journey. Because the spiritual journey allows us to go wherever we want to. We have freedom even when we don't feel like we're free. We are free will even if we don't feel like free will. So... 
Um, it's very funny because sometimes we can get down in a rut. Sometimes we can feel lifeless, that we can feel depressed even because I've went through depressions in my spiritual journey, but it wasn't really depression. I will call it that, but it's only for people to really understand it, to really kind of get a gist of what I'm laying down, if you know what I mean. Um, but really what it is, is just you eliminating what is a limitation. Eliminating all the limitations and taking the chains, the ancient gates, whatever you want to call it, describe it. But it's taking the weight off God. It's taking the edge off of yourself and taking all the pressure off of yourself. And that's what we're really aligning ourselves. We're aligning ourselves with how we're going to live life with ease, grace, and wisdom. With not a care in the world. As if we're like a dog or a baby. Because what is that? That is innocence. That is innocence, my friends. So we're regaining our innocence by allowing ourselves to tap into the inner child. And when we allow ourselves to tap back into that inner child and our inner wisdom and our inner knowing and our inner connectedness to this universe, what we're really doing is that we're allowing ourselves to get back to who we really are. We're getting back to that playful mode, that creation, the imagination. And we're here to play. We're here to have fun. But we don't need to take everything that is negative so seriously. We don't need to take it and internalize it within our spirit and take it within our spirit and internalize it and make it very bad make it very negative make it very this or that or whatever you want to call it don't give in to the power of the negativity don't give in to the power that everything has to be perfect they have to control everything they have to make sure all of this happens and if it doesn't happen i'm not going to be happy guess what you're putting expectations on your life so whenever we put expectations on our life, what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up for a false failure, right? Because there is no failure. There is no success. Success is based on your happiness. And anyone says that people have failed on the spiritual journey, they are liars. They are not really aligned with themselves because they have to cast a judgment on our brothers and sisters. So this has to deal with not only self-judgment, but realizing that the amount of times that we put ourselves down, the amount of times that we sell ourselves short, the amount of times that we always imprint negativity on our reality, on our self-esteem, on our body, on our frame of mind, that means that there are people in the spiritual community that have not transgressed the physical between the non-physical because God embodies the positivity God embodies empowerment God embodies truth and truth always stands and empowerment always lifts up and anything else that is not of that it is like it's kind of like um what is that? That pocket? What is that? The Chinese handcuffs, right? They're like Chinese handcuffs because it's there's too much tension. There's too much friction. There's too much. You can't get out because you're thinking that you're going to balance out the negative with another negative. You're thinking that a negative cause is going to balance out a negative effect, and it doesn't. But when you choose to balance the positive and the negative, the yin and the yang, the light and the dark, the, the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So now you can break free from that Chinese handcuff. I don't even think that's what it's called, but I remember I played with those when I was a little kid and it was a very profound way to look at our spiritual journey because a lot of people are still like this. They don't know what to do. They're, do with their hands they don't know what to do with their hands they don't they're like will ferrell they don't know what to do with their do with their hands 
is because they're still caged into a box, a paradigm, a paradox that they haven't left yet. This is what we call a time loop. This is what we call something that you haven't broken. So this is means that some things in our past, in our past lives, and also just in general has not been cleared yet. So I'm not saying that I am the most cleared enlightened being, but what I am saying is that people can go about the spiritual journey for 20 years and feel like they've tapped into source really. But when we align our energy with vibrancy, with aliveness, with empowerment, with truth, with happiness, with grace, ease, and wisdom, that supersedes everything. So a lot of people still have an egoic nature. Now there is a purified ego. We all still have egos. It's okay to have an ego, but it, when it's not a purified ego, it's the sense of me and it's not the sense of we. Unity is unification. Unity is we. Unity is service to others. And the other thing is service to self. Now in the spiritual journey, that is one of the core principles that you go by, that that happens because you have to be of service to yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to clear, you have to heal. But then it turns into self-realization, which turns into self-actualization, which turns into empowerment. And then that empowerment turns into manifestation. And then that allows you to balance out the non-physical nature and not to be so focused on your body, to not be so focused on your emotions, not so focused on the physical focus and start resonating within a focus that's in a different realm, that's in a different plane, that's in a different universe. So like, I've gotten to the point where I don't care what my body looks like anymore. Now, do I exercise? Do I enjoy it to exercise? But am I solely focused on looking like Chris Hemsworth? No. I've lost, I've lost that focus because it doesn't matter how I look like on the outside, no matter if I'm good looking, no matter if I'm ugly, no matter if I'm pudgy, no matter if anything. Because all that matters is what God says about me and what God says about you. God does not look at what is on the outside. He looks completely on what is in the inside, right? So it's the internal journey that matters because the internal journey will change your outer reality. Your inner journey will change the outer reality. It'll change your outer scope of things. You'll be like, wow, I've stepped into this whole new world that I've never even thought of, that I've never even contemplated about, that I've never even thought was real. And how foolish was I to not to suppress me expecting the unexpected. Now, don't put t too many expectations on things, but expect greatness, expect love. Don't expect anything out of anybody else. Don't expect things out of God, but only expect things out of yourself. Only expect things out of yourself. Because in the end of the day, that's what matters. That's what's profound. That's what's amazing. That's what's beautiful. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter all this other stuff that goes on in the third dimension. It only matters what God says about you. And God loves you. God knows that you're a unique individuation of creation. And he would not put you here if he, if he did not, or she, or an alien, did not have a purpose for you. Because God is interpreted in many different ways. God is interpreted in many different ways. Like some people see God as an alien. Some people see God as a woman. Some people see God as a man. Like I've seen God as a man. That's how I seen him. But the way that we see him is within our third eye. We see that light of the creator. We see that light of the oracle of love, light, and wisdom. Right? So we see that light. We see that purest, vibrant loving, forgiving, graceful light. That is the Christ consciousness of the universe. So with this associating with change, 
because I've talked about change many times on many different other platforms, but, but I wanted to talk about the changes that we go through, the changes that are in our body, the changes that are in our non-physical body, the changes that we go through shifting into densities of consciousness. So oneness is when you don't have to think about it. Oneness is something that you can answer fully and know that's what you want. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to strive for. That is what is going to embody the light of source. So when you have to question oneness, when you have to be rigid against oneness or restrict oneness, restrict bliss, restrict happiness, then I don't know if that is bliss. I don't know if that is truth. Because God is expansion. God is expansion. Expansion always expands. It is always stretching itself out. It's never wearing itself thin. Now we can with toxic seeking. But God's source energy never wears itself thin. It's always stretching itself. It's always pushing the boundary. It's always pushing the envelope. It's always extending creation. It's always extending the never-ending creation that is here for us all. So, have faith, trust yourself, trust your talents in changing times. Trust that things can change for you. And that if you trust and have faith, and knowing that everything can change in your life in an instant, in a nanosecond, in a flash, that everything can be completely different if you just want it to be. You have to want it. You have to want it to be different. I think that we don't allow ourselves to change. And what, what do I mean by allow? Is meaning that we force the change, and that's why we don't change. Or we force the healing when we're not going to heal if we force it. We can try all that we want. We can integrate, we can heal, we can do all these other things, but at the end of the day, when it's your time and place for realization, for change, for monetization of cosmic energy, that will be the time when it happens. So, most people quit before they make it. So, I think that's one thing to really think. Most people quit before they actually make it. So what's beautiful about the spiritual journey is that you don't have to quit. It's not something that you just pick up and then put down. It's something that you live. It's something that you are. And it's something that you cannot escape. <laughs> so you can't escape it. You can't be like, oh, no, I don't want to, no. But at the end of the day, it's always graceful. It's always powerful. It's always all-encompassing. And it always gives you what you absolutely need so that's my closer thank you for this video i'll post it on facebook i'll post it everywhere because i also want to put these on bitshoe that's a new platform if you guys never heard of that do that also make an appointment 60 dollars for an hour 120 dollars for 120 minutes and an hour and 40 minutes for an hour and 40 minutes 140 dollars excuse me so I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you have wonderful lives, and I hope that you reach your spiritual potential. So thank you. This is Y Wolf. God bless, and namaste.